Welcome to Publish OS, the all-in-one Notion template for content creators. With idea capture, content planning, a streamlined production process, predictive content success, content reviews, sponsor management, strategic CTA handling, team and outsourcing hub, and much more. This Notion template isn't a typical content planner. It's designed to help you grow your audience by following a proven content process that you can implement right now and start seeing results tomorrow. It's built around my create process, which is the exact framework that I've used to grow my audience. Concept, we want to capture ideas quickly and sort them by their channel and content pillar. Ranking, now we want to score the idea based on timeliness, search volume, competition, keyword volume, and keyword difficulty. The auto rank and keyword score features will then automatically organize these for us so we know which content ideas to prioritize. Earning, track sponsors and CTAs or call to actions. Assemble, now let's create the piece of content, moving it from the planning stage through to the upload stage. Timing, upload or schedule the content. And lastly, examine. Now that it's live, let's review the analytics by channel, pillar and call to action. Then run experiments with the next piece of content, looking at the view results and the clicks on our CTAs. This framework was the engine powering this template and has accelerated my audience growth. By the way, for those of you who use Headquarters, my personal productivity template, there is a 10 minute integration tutorial linked in the description. Let's dive deeper into the create process and explore publish OS. The link to the template is in the description. All right, welcome to Publish OS. This is the main dashboard. The first thing we're going to look at is these quick action buttons. So here we can easily add a piece of content, add a new sponsor, add a keyword, create a new experiment, and add a team task. Then we have the content calendar here as either a month view, a week view, or a sponsor view. So let's start adding some content so we can see how all of this works. So my piece of content is a beach day vlog. So first here we'll select the stage. Now the stage could just be an idea. If so, we'll leave that blank. This is to keep your dashboard less cluttered because having idea here will just be another thing in the template for you to fill out, another thing for you to do. It's only necessary to fill this in once you're at the second stage of planning. So we jump from planning to creating, to editing, to sponsor and to upload. Sponsor is working with a sponsor, doing the contracts, the sponsor approving the integration, all of that stuff. If you don't have sponsors and you want to delete this stage, click on the three dots here and click on delete. So let's jump a few steps ahead and just say that this is uploaded immediately. It has already been scheduled to go live. Then next we can select the channel. So the channel or account or platform, however you want to look at it, is where you'll write in what platform you are posting on. So you might have a few different YouTube channels, so you'll write them all in here. Uh, for this, I'm just going to write YouTube and then click on plus for new YouTube as we don't have a channel yet. Now the next thing to fill out is content pillar. Now content pillars are a really useful way for you to just categorize your content. So you might do uh, tutorials as one category, you might do vlogs as another category, you might do Q and A's as another category. Knowing the different pillars that you have on your content, whether that's written content like Twitter or a newsletter or video content like Instagram or YouTube, in any case, you'll most likely have different pillars that it fits in. So beach day vlog, I'm going to say that this fits into the vlog pillar. Then we have these three properties. This is an absolute game changer for content creators. We have the competition level, search volume level, and timeliness. This is a really good way of making you rethink the content to ensure it has the best strategy behind it. So for competition here on a beach day vlog, that is going to be very high. Now the search volume for beach day vlog is most likely going to be very low. I can't imagine many people are searching for a beach day vlog. The timeliness, however, you can watch this absolutely whenever, so I'll do timeless. Now these three functions play into the auto rank feature, which I'll show you later on. So here we have the sponsor. So if we click here, we can actually select the sponsor for the video. So for beach day vlog, let's say we do have a sponsor and let's go with Beach Towel Co. And then click on new sponsor here. Here we can fill out how much the sponsor is paying us. Let's say they're paying us $10 for this integration. Then here we can select the CTA. Now the CTA is crucial for the entrepreneurs who are making content. Or even for people solely just wanting to be content creators, it is super important to know where you are driving people. So the CTA stands for call to action. We basically want to know in this piece of content, what am I asking my audience to do? Now you don't have to fill in CTA. Let's say you only talk about the sponsor and there is no other call to action in the video. But sometimes it might be something like, hey, go follow me on Instagram. 
And that might be the call to action that you say in this piece of content. So I'll click on here, new Instagram. That just means now that Instagram is a CTA in your videos. And then later down the line, we can track how many people actually went and followed you from this piece of content. We'll look at CTAs later as they are super important for the growth of your business. Then here we have sponsored deadline, sponsored due date, and the view result. So we won't fill in view result because we don't know the views yet because it's in the future. But let's dive into the sponsor aspect of this piece of content. So we'll click on Beach Towel Co here, and that will open up this. So here we have a bit more information. We can see here automatically that Beach Day Vlog is showing up under here. So we know here that Beach Day Vlog is sponsored by Beach Towel Co. We'll see every piece of content here that Beach Towel Co is sponsoring. So the contact will be Mr. Towel. And then for the sponsor deadline, let's just say today. So we can see days till due date, there is zero days, it is due today. And for the sponsor stage here, we can see is it either inbound, is it I pitched, is it in talks, or are they a sponsor? So they are a sponsor at this stage. So if I click away, we can see that Beach Day Vlog is scheduled to go up today. It's going to be posted on YouTube and it is sponsored by Beach Towel Co. And they are paying us $10. So that is under the sponsor view. If we click on the all content view, you can see it looks slightly differently. In this view, we don't wanna see as much information. So here we're just seeing what is the piece of content, what is the channel it is being posted on, and what is the stage of that piece of content. So this has been uploaded slash scheduled. Uploaded and scheduled mean the same thing in this system. It basically just tells us this is a piece of content you don't have to worry about, it has been sorted and posted. So I'll add in a few more pieces of content here just to show you how the rest of the system works. So I've added some pieces of content in here, how to cut your own hair, the Blah Festival vlog, a salad bowl recipe, and the YouTube channel tips for new channels. So if we scroll down here, we can see the incompleted sponsor section. This is super important for people with sponsors. Again, if you don't have sponsors, you can just drag this away and put this straight into the sponsor page. That way you don't have to see it on your dashboard, but you still have that functionality. But for those of you who do have sponsors, it is fantastic to keep here. So here we can see the sponsor deadline. So when do we need to send the ad integration to the sponsor for them to approve? Then here we have a very handy countdown. So we can see we have one day left to do the sponsor for Lettuce Co. and uh, two days left to send the sponsor for Data Co. We can see how much the sponsor is paying us. We can see which stage we're currently in. So we can see here that the salad bowl recipe is a newsletter and we are in the creating stage. And we can see we're in the planning stage for the YouTube video of YouTube tips for new channels. And then here we can see the publish date for the actual video. This is incredibly useful to have on your dashboard if you have sponsors. Then here we can see the content process with planning, creating, editing, and sponsor. Again, we don't have an idea section here. It will become way too cluttered if you're like me and you have 100 to 200 ideas for content. That's just going to be a very, very long list and it's unnecessary. The same thing for uploaded, that is hidden. If you want to have uploaded showing and no stage showing, no stage being ideas, then you can change that by clicking on the three dots, clicking on group and showing here, clicking in uploaded, clicking that, and clicking in no stage for ideas. But as you can imagine, if you have 400 things that you've uploaded, it's going to become a very long list as well. Then down here is where we have the ideas. So you can add ideas in a few different ways in Publish OS. You can either click here and add a piece of content. So this is the idea, home renovation vlog. Now we can just leave it at that and not fill out any more details if we want. If we just wanna capture the idea really quickly, we just fill it out, click away, and then we've added the idea. If we scroll down, we can see here that home renovation vlog is showing up. If we want, we can fill out these three properties here after it's been added, or we can fill it out straight away as we click here, how to plant a lime tree. We'll leave the stage empty, and then we can fill out the competition search volume and timeliness right here. So we'll say the competition for this is low. We'll say the search volume is medium, and this is a very timeless video. And then we can see that this idea here, how to plant a lime tree is showing up under ideas. So you can either click on the button here or you can click on the new button here or you can click on the new button here. Now this is the ideas list. So this doesn't have any sorting or grouping added to it, but this auto rank feature does. So it's actually ranking every piece of content that hasn't been uploaded by the timeliness, search volume and competition. So what I'll do here with home renovation just to show you how this works, is fill out these details and show how it can reorder this for us. So let's say that home renovation vlog is timeless. People will watch that whenever. The search volume for it is high, let's say that. So you can see here, it already jumped up above how to plant a lime tree. So we know that posting home renovation vlog is a better piece of content in terms of strategy for these three criterias than how to plant a lime tree. 
Then let's say for the competition, the home renovation vlog is actually low competition. No one's posting about it. You can see it jumped all the way up here in this list. And now home renovation is sitting here at the top. Now for it to beat the Blah Festival vlog, it would have to be trending. So let's say home renovation vlogs are trending and I click on that. You can see it has now jumped up to the top of this list. That is because of the filters that I have added. So this is the auto rank feature where it is automatically ranking everything. If I click on the filter here and show you the settings that I've got, we have three sortings, sort by timeliness, search volume, and competition. Now this is the order of importance that I have chosen. Auto rank is putting timeliness as the most important criteria, then search volume, and then competition. If I were to reorganize any of these, you will see that this list here would change. So let's say that competition is what we deem most valuable. If I drag this up here, you can see that they got reorganized here. You can put these in any order that you think makes most sense. Maybe you think search volume should be first. But personally for me, I like working with timeliness, search volume, and competition. This auto rank feature, which by the way has a separate page here, is an absolute game changer in terms of strategy with content. You won't be making content now and just hoping that it performs well. You can actually do some research or some intuitive guesses on how you think it would perform. So you know, is this a piece of content that is worth actually making? Then in the next one here, we have in the works, which is basically any piece of content that you are currently in the stages of making. We have published, which is basically every piece of content that you've published. We have the published gallery. If you have thumbnails, you can click on these pieces of content and add cover, and then you'll be seeing all of the different thumbnails here so you can visually see all the content that you've posted. And then lastly, we have the tab of all content, just in case any piece of content goes missing, or you just want a full list of every idea and every piece of content, you can find that here. But most likely you'll be sitting with the in the work stage open so you can see everything that you are currently working on. So if we scroll down, we can see these four columns here, strategy, response, monetize, and support. But before I get to them, let's have a quick look at channels. So here you can add all of your different channels, your different social accounts, your different platforms that you use. If you have multiple YouTube accounts, you can add them all in here. So let's click on one of these channels here. Let's click on YouTube and click on new channel. So on here, you can add a URL. So you have a quick link to the channel. We have our schedule here, which I'll talk about later. Then we have the weeks view where we're only seeing content relating to this channel here. Then we have the month view and you can see here that newsletter is not showing up in this list anymore. If we scroll down, we can see the process. So planning, creating, editing, and sponsor. And then down here we have channel ideas. So any content ideas that are only relevant to this channel will show up here. You can add those ideas straight in here if you want. This is just a really useful place to work when you're thinking about only this channel and you wanna see only the relevant stuff. Again, before we get to these amazing pages, let's just talk about the posting schedule. So here you can fill out your actual planned posting schedule. So if I click here, I can say this is YouTube, then here on Tuesday newsletter, Thursday YouTube, and then I can fill out the times. So ideally I post at 8 a.m. and the newsletter at 1 p.m. I can delete this if I want, or I can add more. Let's say you're posting multiple TikToks a day at certain times, you can fill that out. It's just really useful to have a posting schedule so we know what to aim for. And then here we have followers, and I've put this in the main hub instead of putting it in the analytics. If you want, you can just simply drag this into the analytics, but from talking to a few content creators, it sounds like this is an important thing that you wanna have in your main dashboard, and I totally understand that. So here we can select the channel. So we're going to go YouTube here and newsletter for this one. And then I'll delete this empty space. And then here month one, what we can do is just rename this to whatever month you're in, March and fill out the amount of followers that you have. So let's say 10 and newsletter five. So as the months go by, you will see these numbers increase, which will hopefully be very motivating. All right, let's have a look at the strategy, the response, the monetize and support. Let's start with keywords. I've created this thing called a keyword score. So this is vital for content creators, whether you're creating educational content, you're creating entertainment content or inspirational content, every single account can implement keywords into their strategy. And this is especially useful for smaller channels. So let's say I've done some research and I see that Bondi Beach Surf has a lot of people searching for it. Let's say the volume for this is 2000 people per month. The likelihood for me to rank on this is kind of low. There's a lot of competition out there. So let's say out of 10, I'm going with a three. I'm not too confident. Then once we've used the keyword and we've actually tested it on a piece of content, we can click on used for here. And let's say that this beach day vlog, we actually instead decide to rename beach day vlog to Bondi Beach Surf or something related to that in the title. Now it's the same piece of content. It is just a beach day vlog. However, we are implementing keyword strategy for this piece of content. 
really diving into the keywords here and understanding how can I implement this in my different pieces of content can absolutely skyrocket your audience growth. Now, I won't click on Beach Day Vlog here because it will get removed from this list as I have a filter here saying only show me keywords that I haven't used. And I want to show you how the keyword score feature works. So I'm going to click here and add another keyword, how to build kitchen cabinets. And let's say the search volume for this is 1000 people. But the likelihood of me achieving this, let's say I feel pretty confident about this. There's not that many people and I think I could actually win. Let's say it's nine out of 10. As you can see, the keyword score for this is 9,000. So it jumps up in the list. That's because this keyword score tab is actually ranking these from the highest keyword score to the lowest. So if you're looking to implement keyword strategies into your content, and remember this works for absolutely any channel. If you're in entertainment, you can see how it would work for vlogging. If you're in education, how to build cabinets, you can see how it works here. Inspiration, you can definitely implement keywords there. It's just such a fantastic strategy for you to use as a content creator especially new ones looking to build an audience from scratch. Then here we have the priority of volume. So if we click on that, you can see it actually reorders this. Keyword score is no longer the priority. The priority for this is volume. So if you think that volume is the most important thing and you're not looking to use this keyword score feature, you just want to know the volume, highest volume, that's what I'm going to use, then you can see that here under this tab. Now this is probably a more useful tab for content creators with a large following they probably don't have to worry about competition as much because they have an established audience and the algorithm trusts them. Then we have the likelihood. So this is just putting the likelihood first. So even if it has a low volume, but the likelihood is very high, then you can see that here. This is probably most useful for brand new accounts. So you're probably not going to rank on stuff that has a ton of competition. So if you can find these outliers where there's not a lot of competition and granted there might not be a lot of people searching, but if you still have a chance here to get a few new people seeing your content, then it's definitely useful to use this tab. And then here we have the use tab. So anytime you've actually used a keyword on a piece of content, you can find that here. So let's just say Bondi Beach Surf. I add in here beach day vlog. You can then see underused beach day vlog is showing up. So that was keywords, which I cannot recommend enough. Let's have a look at content pillars. So here we have recipes, tutorial and vlog, which we added earlier. So let's click on vlog and open this up. Here we can see a pillar list, which is a list of every single piece of content relating to this pillar of vlog. Then we have the pillar board and here we can see the planning, creating, editing and sponsor again, only relating to the vlog or whatever your content pillar is. Here we have the related inspiration, which I'll talk about later. And then we have the list of content ideas again, only relating to this content. And we can see the uploaded, which is just content that has been uploaded again, just relating to this pillar. Then under response, we have analytics. I find this super useful, but here we are seeing the content being ranked by channel pillar and CTA and CTA clicks. So this is using the view result property. So let's fill this out. Let's do above for this one and let's fill out some new ones. I'll just do blah, blah for this one. And the CTA was publish OS example vid here. And let's say the CTA was headquarters. So for this piece of content, blah, blah, let's say that it performed under our channel average. So I'm going to click under here. Then example vid here, let's say that this did an average. It performed just kind of what we expect from our channel. So if I click on that, you can see it actually reorganizes this. It goes from above to average to under. So on this tab, it's breaking it down by channel. So you can see YouTube here. So let's just change this from YouTube to newsletter instead. You can see a newsletter channel has been added here with the content blah, blah showing up. Then we can see it broken down by pillar. So here we can see the vlog pillar and these ones here don't have an actual pillar associated with them. So we can always add that if we want to say example vid here actually did have a content pillar of uh, recipes. Then you can see that the recipes tab has been created here and anything you add in these. So let's say this new one is above. You can see it reorganizes it here. It's reorganizing it in that group. Then here we have by CTA. So here we can see headquarters, Instagram, publish OS. Again, it would do the same thing. And then here we have by CTA clicks. So right now I haven't filled these out, but I'm going to show you again. It's going to reorganize this. So let's say in the beach day vlog, the CTA was, Hey, go follow me on Instagram. And let's say that 10 people went and did that. You can see it bounces to the top. Let's say an example vid here for headquarters. Let's say that 20 people went and did that. You can see it puts it first. And for blah, blah, let's say 15. You can see that blah, blah jumps up with 15 CTA clicks. So this is really useful to know. If we know that an example vid here, 20 people clicked the CTA, then there is something that we did here in the example vid here piece of content that made it a really good call to action. 
So we can click on that piece of content and really try to examine why did this do well? Why did it do better than the other CTA clicks on most other videos? This kind of thinking is what will propel your channel and be especially helpful if you have products that you're selling, whether that's digital products, physical products, coaching, uh, whether you're trying to promote another channel that you have, this is so useful to know. Then down here we have the analytics experiments. Here is the space where you can run experiments to see what is working and what is not working. So let's add an example saying subscribe at the end of the video. Then here we can say, which piece of content did we test this with? So if I click this, I'll see all of my contents. So let's say I tested this with the beach day vlog. This property here is a roll up. So it's showing me that this beach day vlog got 10 CTA clicks. Now this isn't relevant for this experiment, but if I were to say something like limited time only, and then testing that with the example vid here, you can see that it's showing up 20. So when I say limited time only for my product, then I get 20 CTA clicks. So here we can see the stage of this experiment. Are we testing it? Has it improved? Was there no difference or did it make it worse? So let's say that saying subscribe at the end of the video has gotten me more subscribers. On implementation here, I will click on improved. And then now on the improved list, you will see that here. So this is a really useful tab to go back to, to think what are all the different experiments that I'm doing, the little tactics that I'm doing that make a really big difference on my content. Then here we have the audience feedback. So if we click on that, here is just a really good place to put any feedback that you're getting from the audience. So let's just add a new feedback here. The background music is too loud. Sorry, I've got on that on a few videos. So I can fill that piece of content out here and say, what was the source? So this was all from comments and I can even say the relevant content here. So, okay, people were saying that on the how to plant a lime tree video and I can say here whether it's been resolved or not. So if you are the type of person who reads comments and you wanna take that stuff on board, then this is a really good place to do it. Then here under the response, we have content inspiration. So in here you can add any different inspiration that you might be finding. This can be other videos, this can be other pieces of content, other newsletters, whatever it is, any articles, any piece of content that you find inspirational and you think might help with your content creation, you can put that in here to save for later. You can then also relate this to a pillar and it will show up on that page. So let's just say example inspiration. If I open up vlog here, you can see here that on the vlog page, inspiration, example inspiration is showing up. Then under the monetize, we have sponsors, affiliates, and CTAs. So let's click on sponsors. So on this page, we can see a full list of all of our sponsors. We can see a full list of all of our leads and we can add any in here as well. And we can just see the full list of either leads, sponsors, in talks with anything like that. So under leads here is very useful. If you're sending out and pitching to people, you can say I pitched uh, example co, put that in here and track who are the people that you are pitching to and at the same time, who are the people that have pitched to you? So inbound sponsors as well. So then here we have the content revenue. So how much money have we made from sponsors on our content? We can see the sponsor total of $45. And then on the revenue by sponsor, we can see it here broken down by the actual sponsor. So in total from Beach Towel Co, we have made $10. This page is absolutely crucial if you are working with sponsors or looking to work with sponsors. Here on the affiliates, we can track any different affiliates that we have. So I'll write Notion Plus. I can put my affiliate link here, my dashboard link, my commission, purchases and earned. So let's say the commission is $5. Let's say the purchases is five. We can see we have earned $25. Then here we have a full list of CTAs. So if we click on this, we can see the full list of call to actions that we have. And here we can see the best content by clicks. So it's ranking the highest clicks first. We can see it broken down by pillar, by CTA and by channel. Again, this is so important for the entrepreneurs out there. Then we have the team page, which I'll talk about last, the networking tools and asset library. So let's click on networking. Now here we can see network broken down by groups. So it's either a collab, a communication, a friend reached out or want to connect with. This is really useful to know and to track. I really recommend having a place where you're actually tracking your network as it can be such an important part of growing an audience. Then here we have the want to connect with, which is basically just a filter, which is showing us only people that we want to connect with or that have reached out, but we haven't yet started the communication phase, the friend phase or doing a collaboration. Then here we have the tools, which is just a really useful place where we can track any of our tools. So the tool is Notion. We can write down the one-time cost, the monthly cost, the annual cost, which card we use. We can archive it if we're no longer subscribed or if we have sold the item. This is just a really useful place to see your tools, your gear, your software subscriptions. And it's just really useful to have a place where you know everything you're subscribed to and, and pretty much every tool or gear that you're actually using to make content. Then here we have the asset library, which is really, really cool. Let's say you create content for Instagram or for YouTube, and you just want to have a library of all of the different B-rolls that you have. So you can fill them in here. So me walking 
down street, me sitting at desk. Then what you can do is fill out the types here. So this is a desk. This is outside. And if you have Notion Plus, you can upload the video straight in here. If not, if you have Dropbox or uh, Google Drive or something like that, you can just link to it straight here. And then let's say you're editing a piece of content and you need a shot of you at the desk. Well, what you can do is just sort by the type and just show me stuff relating to desk. And now you're only seeing B-roll shots of you at the desk and you have a link straight to it here. And then down here we have assets. This could be written stuff like link in bio text, video description templates. It could be video stuff like uh, an intro video that you always use. It could be audio stuff like background music that you use. It could be visuals like your logo anything like that that you want to keep in here, having a place for your assets is so, so useful, especially having it in Notion so you're not storing it on your computer. So whenever you need it, you have access to it. And then lastly, we have team tasks. Now, if you have a team or you outsource, this page is going to be a game changer. It is so, so useful. Here you can add any different tasks. So this database here is not connected to your headquarters if you're using headquarters, so you don't have to worry about that. So here you can write any pieces of content that you want to outsource. So let's say thumbnail design. You can select the piece of content. So let's say it is for the beach day vlog. Then you'll click here to assign it to someone on your team or someone that you're outsourcing to. And here we can select the stage so it has been assigned. And then we also have a board view where we can see assigned working for review and complete. This is so useful if you have a team because you're using the same app. We're not using 15 different apps all the time. And if you want to add any actual uh, comments or uh, instructions to the task, you can just click here and write blah, blah, blah. That is very useful instructions. And you have that now here for thumbnail design uh, for the piece of content of Beach Day Vlog. So if we scroll down here, we have SOPs. Now this is blank, but I highly recommend putting that in here. SOP stands for Standard Operating Procedures. If it's a task that they're doing more than once, I highly recommend doing an SOP for it so they can follow along your instructions. You can embed Loom videos in here, you can write them out, whatever it is, I really recommend creating a little SOP dashboard here. Speaking of dashboard, we have the Teams dashboard here. So if we click on Team Member and click on New Member here, let's open this up. So on this page, you can add the relevant SOPs. So to do that, you can just link to the page. So you'll do forward slash link, link to page. And then here you'll select that page. So whatever that SOP page is called. And then here we'll have all of the team tasks coming up. So what we want to do is just change this assigned to and select the name of this team member. And then the last click is to click share and share this page with that team member so they can see only the stuff relating to them because team members don't want to see every single thing going on in the business. They just want to see the tasks that relate to them and the SOPs that are useful for them. If you are serious about content creation, then the link is in the description. Stop wasting hours every single week on a poor system. Stop using sticky notes, notes on a phone, scripts in Google Docs, team jobs through Slack, sponsorship management and emails. All of this, it is an absolute mess. If your content isn't growing as fast as you want, it is most likely because of your system. Link is in the description and thank you so much for watching.